Welcome to the Lean Out Your Business podcast, a show dedicated to helping entrepreneurs accelerate business growth and simplify success. I'm your host, Krista Grasso, and I've been working with businesses for more than two decades to help them lean out and optimize what's working while eliminating anything that's not adding value. So if you are ready to get more time back in your day, more profit in your business, and to do business differently, growing and scaling on your terms, let's dive into today's episode. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Lean Out Your Business podcast. Today, we are going to be putting the no in November, and we're going to be diving into the importance of saying no to create space for something new. Because at this point in the year, you probably have a lot of really incredible things planned for the new year that you're really excited about. Regardless of when you're listening to this episode, the concepts that we're going to go through about what to say no to and how to create that space is valuable at any time of the year. But especially as you're about to go into a new 90-day period, a new year, or even a new week or a new day. So we just wrapped up our Reimagine retreat last month, and it was absolutely incredible. It was such a great experience. And one of the activities that we do on the first day of the retreat is looking at what we're going to say no to. And there's some really great and fun things that we do to really make it real and really get clear on what to say no to. We go through some activities to actually let things go. I will save some of that as a surprise in case you join me at our upcoming retreats in the new year, which we have two coming. One is in March and one is going to be in October again. So you can get all those details over at leanoutmethod.com slash retreat. But I do want to walk you through some of the concepts that we go through in that activity, because I think it really is so important to look at not just the exciting things that you want to do in the new year, but the things you're going to say no to so that you create the space for them. So maybe as you look ahead, you're thinking, all right, it's time I finally write my book or publish the book that I've written. Maybe you're finally going to create a podcast or a YouTube channel, or you're going to expand your team in a really significant way. Or maybe you have new offers that you're adding. Maybe you're looking at bringing in-person retreats back like we're doing or adding a high-level mastermind or even reimagining something in your current offer suite. These are all things that are really exciting, but what we tend to do in our excitement is we add. We go into the new year with all of the things that we're already doing as our starting baseline, and then we add, add, add all of the new things on top of it. And we can really quickly become overcommitted, we can become overworked, and we can become really overwhelmed. And as a result, we either fall behind on our goals and end up feeling really discouraged, or on the flip side, we end up working way too much in order to try to achieve the goals that we set. Neither one is setting us up for success. And this happens because we don't take the time to create the space for the new things that we want to pursue. One of the things that I'm frequently quoted as saying is the most important thing that you can create in your business is space. And the reason I feel that way is because as visionaries, we can so easily get enamored with the new and we can overlook the space and focus that it takes to really successfully deliver something new in the business without having major disruptions to what we're already doing, compromising the quality of what we're already doing, or causing us just simply to work way more than we had intended. We need to be really intentional with our time so that we can set ourselves up for success within the capacity that we have. And so in today's episode, what I want to focus on is three things in particular that I think is really helpful when you're looking at creating space. The first is getting clear on what's working and what's not in your business, so you know which things to start with saying no to. Now, in an ideal world, you only have to say no to things that aren't working. But the reality is, especially if you already run a fairly lean business like we do, you might only have things that are working in your business and you might only have things that you really enjoy in your business. 
And if that's the case, then the second thing that we're going to dive into is how do you make those tough trade-offs when the reality is that there's something new you want to do? There is no magical space for it without saying no to something else, but there isn't really anything that you want to say no to. So that's the second scenario that we'll look at. And then the third is what I call time creep. I'm sure you've heard of scope creep before, but time creep is a close cousin to that. And this is something that can really often lead to overworking and to those kind of unknown unknowns that come up and end up wreaking havoc on your schedule and on your commitments. So we're going to dive into all three of those so that you are clear on what to say no to so you can create the space for what you are most excited about in the new year. So if we start with identifying what isn't working in your business, I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because this is something that I talk about so often. And if you have not already listened to, or even if you have, it's a good time to go back and re-listen to episode 12 that I shared on our Chuck technique. And Chuck stands for what you're going to cut, hold, change, or keep in the business. And this looks at everything from your offers to your activities. And it runs through four questions, looking at the return on investment you're getting, whether or not those things are still in alignment with where you're going, whether they're fulfilling to you, if you're still getting fulfillment from them, and ultimately if they are an investment. So maybe it's something that's an investment in the future. You don't necessarily see that immediate return on investment, but you're doing it for some kind of future payoff. So if you go back and listen to episode 12 on the Chuck technique, that's going to walk you through getting really clear on what's working, what's not working, and where you should really be putting your focus right now. Now, there's lots of other techniques that you can leverage as well, like the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule, looking at, you know, the 80% of results that you're getting from 20% of the things that you're doing. And then for those of you listening who are a part of our Simplify to Scale program, you know, the PPV matrix, the passion profit value matrix, that's yet another great tool and technique that you can use that really just helps you get clear on where to focus and where to make some of those trade-offs. So as I shared, the easiest things to say no to are the things that aren't working in your business. So I always recommend that you start there because it's challenging to say no to anything. It's especially challenging to say no to things that are working in your business which is what we're going to talk about next. So start with the things that you are more comfortable with letting go of. Now, just because it may not make sense to keep doing something, just because something isn't working really great today and you know that you can say no to it, doesn't mean that you can immediately stop doing it right this second. Sometimes you do need to put a transition plan in place and be really strategic about how you stop doing that activity. But start with getting clear on what you can stop doing And again, if you're listening to this episode in November towards the end of the year, this is a great time to round out this year and really close out all of those activities, those offers, all those things that you don't want to bring forward with you into the new year. And as a bonus, it gives you the space for the new things that you do want to do. But now let's dive into what if everything is actually working well in your business, but you still need to create that space for something new. The reality is that you only have so much capacity. So between you and the existing team that you have today, you have a set amount of capacity each day, each week, month, quarter, year, et cetera. So if the things that you want to do are going to put you above that capacity, you've got to make those tough trade-offs and say no to something that you're currently doing, even if it's working well. This is what it takes to continuously level up your business. It's making those really tough decisions that we wish we didn't have to make, but that's just the nature of scaling a business. So the very first step is to look at everything that you're doing and ensure it's aligned with that next level evolution of your business. Now, if you did the Chuck technique, you should have already given this some thought. But if not, really dive into the alignment piece because you'll often find that there's things that are working today But when you look at where you want to take the business next year, or if you look at a longer horizon and you look at where you want to take the business over the next few years, you'll find that some of those things that you're doing today are actually going to need to change or really just are in alignment with where you want to take things next. Those are often the first to go. And an example in my business 
is that I just recently let go of my weekly lean coffees. So this is my training and Q&A series that I've done in my private Facebook community for years now. I've delivered over 100 of these sessions, which are advanced level content, and they're available out in the Facebook community in the guide section, or if you just scroll through the feed. And there's some really exceptional content out there. And I love delivering those sessions. I could teach workshops. I could lead things just really all day, every day. I love to create content. I love to share. I love to teach. I especially love when people show up and ask questions and it becomes interactive in the chat. It's one of my happy places. It's something I really like to do. And those in the community who participate really get a lot of value out of those sessions. And I get such great feedback on them. So if you hear me say that and think, well, then why on earth would you let them go? <laughs> the reality is I'm looking at directionally where I'm taking things in my business combined with directionally what I'm seeing from my ideal client base. And maybe you're finding yourself not leveraging social media as much anymore. What I'm finding is a whole lot of my clients are not leveraging social media as much anymore. And so when I look at showing up every week live and teaching something in my Facebook community, is that really the right place to do that? Is that really the right thing to do? So it ultimately made sense to say no to the weekly lean coffee. And in doing so, this gave me the opportunity to start doing more in-depth trainings and workshops once a month instead. So instead of doing a 30-minute session each week, I'm doing a one-hour session each month on the second Tuesday of every month. And this allows me to go a little bit deeper into some of the concepts, and it also allowed me to combine a couple other things that I would do. So if you've been in my community for a while, you've probably joined one of my free workshops, whether it's the Scalable Signature Offer Workshop or the Simplify to Scale Workshop. I do those really regularly. And so instead, I'm combining them and replacing everything now with this once per month workshop. So it really just simplifies everything that I'm doing. But not only does it simplify and give me space, it also is meeting my community and my clients where they're at and where I'm seeing their needs shifting as well. That's another thing to be looking at when you're considering alignment is it's not just where you're taking things in your business, but it's where your community, your clients, your leads, where they are, how they're consuming content or programs or whatever it is that you're considering, because sometimes there are changes. And right now we are at a point where there's a lot of change. So it makes sense to go out and consider what you're currently doing and if you either can let something go or reimagine something in such a way that it ends up simplifying and streamlining what you're doing. And that is one of my next tips. So sometimes you don't actually need to cut anything, but you can simplify, you can streamline, and you can systematize. And if you do that, that alone will often give you back the capacity that you need. Now, especially if you look at all of your things and you're like, you know what? I'm not cutting anything. I'm just going to hire somebody. I'm just going to bring on and expand out my team and then I can do everything, right? And that's where most of us start is like, we just want to keep it all. What I would encourage you to do, even if you are considering expanding out your team so that you do have more capacity or capability in the business, even if you're doing that, I still think it makes sense to lean things out first. Make sure that you're only delegating the things that really should be done and make sure that you're simplifying, streamlining, and systematizing things before you hire somebody to do them, or you have that new person, have that be one of the very first things that they do is train them on what you do today and then give them the activity to go ahead and simplify, systematize, and streamline. Because at the end of the day, you never want to be paying for somebody to do something the hard, complicated way or to be doing something that shouldn't be done at all. Now, even after all of that, if you still have more things that you want to do than you have the capacity to do, Here's a pro tip for you if you're really struggling with saying no and cutting things. And this is to go in reverse order. Instead of looking at what you can cut, look at what your most important, highest priority, highest impact thing is that you want to be doing in the new year or in the new time box, the new 90 days, whatever that is. 
Once you determine that, look at what the next most important thing is, then the next, and so on and so on. And the reality is the things at the bottom of that list are going to either get cut or are going to be put on hold because there's simply no capacity for them. Now, sometimes if you do that combined with the simplifying and systematizing and expanding out your team, again, that gives you the capacity that you need to be able to do what you want to do. Now, in order to do all of this really effectively, you have to be super clear on how much space you actually need. And you will find that sometimes it's more than you might initially think. That's where that time creep concept comes into play that can end up causing overwork. So if you do any private work with clients or you offer any kind of services, I'm sure you're familiar with the term scope creep, which is when the scope of a project ends up expanding beyond what you committed to. Sometimes it was because of poor planning. Sometimes there's just unexpected things that happen. But at the end of the day, the scope ends up being a lot bigger than you thought it was. Well, along those same lines, time creep is when something takes more time than you expected. And there's a lot of root causes for that, but there's two that are really common that we're going to focus on. And the first is not considering the before and the after. And the second, which is related to that, is not thinking holistically about the impact on the other activities. So let me break down what I mean by each of those. So when you think about the thing that you are most excited about going into the new year, like of all the things that you're thinking about next year, what's the one that you are most excited about and just can't wait to be focused on? When you think about that thing, one of the things that people often do is they think about the thing but they don't think about all the stuff that needs to happen up front in order to be able to do that thing, what I call your enablers. And they also tend to not think about the stuff that needs to happen afterwards. And so if you start with the stuff that needs to be done up front, maybe you need to hire somebody, whether it's an internal team member or you're trying to find some kind of expert or consultant or freelancer who's going to do something for you. Maybe you need to hire a tool as opposed to a person. So instead of bringing on a person to do it, you need to find a certain tool or technology or system that you can leverage that's going to allow you to do the thing that you want to do. Maybe you need to make some kind of technology investments or changes. Maybe you need to update your website or you need to install something new in order to add a capability. And all of those things are examples of enablers, the things that maybe you need to do before so that you can actually do the thing that you want to do. And in some cases, especially if you're thinking about doing that thing in January, you might have to do the enablers now. Like one of my clients knew that she wanted to change email providers and she knew that she wanted a CRM system. So the enabling activities, it was about a month worth of enablers, which was going off and assessing and researching different tools and different systems to see what was the best next step solution? Should she get an email provider that had the CRM functionality included? Should she get an email and a CRM? Which one was best based on her website, based on her type of business, based on her goals and what she's trying to do? And so there was a whole lot of research that went into making the decision about which tool was the best solution for her, given what she's doing today and what she wants to be able to do in the future. If there had not been protected space for all of that research and testing and work up front, the implementation and the cutover to the new email and CRM tool would have ended up being delayed. So you want to think about the stuff that needs to happen before and make sure that you're factoring that into your capacity. But then there's the after. So we often think of cool, we're going to do this thing. Great. Maybe it's a new offer that you're going to be delivering. But what about once you launch that offer, you still have to deliver the offer. You have to maintain that offer. You have to optimize that offer. You might need to relaunch that offer multiple times, depending on the way that you have it structured. And sometimes people get the before activities, but quite often, I see people completely overlook or not fully account for the ongoing after activities. It's very rare that we do something in our business that is truly done. The project is done and there's no tail behind it. There's almost always a tail of work. Now, sometimes that tail is forever. Other times it's just like a little bit of lingering cleanup or some things that need to happen 
before it's done. But either way, don't just think about the thing. You want to also think about what needs to happen beforehand to enable you to be able to do the thing. And then what needs to happen afterwards to successfully close out what you did or to be able to deliver, maintain, and optimize what you did. Now, the second piece of this is looking holistically at the impact on your other activities. So if you release that new offer, does your marketing and your launch roadmap need to change? It probably does. If you had a different marketing and launch roadmap before this offer existed, I bet a lot of your content needs to change. Maybe you need to restructure when and how you end up doing your launches. Maybe you need new content for social media. Maybe you need somebody new or new scripts or systems or something for customer support requests. So you want to be thinking about, again, not just the thing, not just the before and after of the thing, but the impact to the other things you're already doing in your business that this thing is going to end up creating. And I'll give an example with my podcast. So when I launched this podcast, I knew that I needed to free up a big batch of time to be able to launch it. I also knew I needed to free up a big batch of time to be able to continuously produce new episodes, come up with the ideas for the episodes, record the episodes, publish the episodes, all of the different components. And it was a combination of time from me, time from my existing team, and finding some new people like my podcast editor, who somebody I didn't previously have on my team. But beyond all of that, we had to look holistically at the impact of the other things that we were doing and specifically our marketing efforts. So our newsletters changed. Our social media strategy changed. Our content management plan changed. They all changed for the better, but it was still a change and it completely transformed the way that we approach and deliver content in the business. So it's not just carving out the time to create and publish a podcast episode. It's really looking very holistically at how everything in your business fits together and how this new thing that you want to do needs to fit into and integrate into your current ecosystem. Now, the silver lining in all of this is that this is all something that you can really easily plan for if you do so with intention. If you need help with it, just reach out and see how we can partner together. VIP days are usually an exceptional way to go in and get super clear on your plan for next year, to get really clear on what you're letting go of, to look at all those things that maybe you're not seeing, the befores, the afters, the holistic interrelationship of how this plugs into everything that you're doing. Maybe your hiring plan for who you need to bring in next to support you, or the plan for how you're going to simplify and systematize what you have so that you're doing things in the most efficient and effective way possible so you know you're fully maximizing your time. Those are all things that we can do in a VIP day. So you can put time on my calendar at leanoutmethod.com slash consult. If you want to talk through that, if you feel like you want somebody with that outside in perspective to be able to support you in making sure that you are fully set up for success. But even if you're doing this on your own, Everything I outlined in this episode is going to help set you up for success and scale next year. It is a really exciting time. You should be excited about all of those new things that you're thinking of doing, or even just the small changes that you're thinking of making in your business. Sometimes it's not these big radical different things that we're doing, but it's smaller things that we're doing that are really, really exciting because we can see how those small changes are going to have a really massive impact on our results. So if you're excited thinking about the new year, but you listened to this episode and had your old blank moment where you're like, mm, I don't know if I thought through everything here, just take some time and really clearly think about how much space do you need for what you want to do next? What's the stuff that you need to be thinking about now so that you can start those projects or those initiatives or whatever you want to be doing next year? And what is it going to take to then sustain, maintain, optimize that, deliver on that afterwards? And what's the impact to your current ecosystem? How can you integrate everything together so that you have a ton of success and what can you let go of and say no to so you can create the space for all of the amazing things that are to come in the new year? I hope you got a ton of value out of this episode. I will see you again next week. 
Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Lean Out Your Business podcast. I hope you got a lot of value and actionable insights from today's show and would love if you take a moment to leave us a review. If you have any questions on today's episode or on how to lean out your business, join us over in our private Facebook community where every week we do live training and Q&A and I'd love to have you be part of the conversation. Head to leanoutmethod.com slash group to join us. And before you go, be sure to subscribe to the show so you're the first to know when we release a new episode. We'll see you next week.